Hey guys, good evening. Uh, this is Brother Easton again. I hope you guys had an amazing uh, Easter weekend, that it was uh, filled with joy and time with your family. Um, of course, you know, a uh, good dinner and maybe Easter egg hunts and candy. But ultimately, guys, I hope that it was a time that you could remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and his resurrection. Uh, speaking of that, that's what we'll be discussing today is Jesus' resurrection. Um, but before we get to that, again, a couple announcements that need to be made. Uh, again, as of now, uh, False Creek is still a go. Uh, we will continue to let you know as we find out information. Um, so False Creek is still happening as we know. We will find out officially by May 1st. And so anytime within the next couple weeks, I should know whether camp is going to happen or not. But uh, we just need to keep preparing as if we are having it. So we're getting t-shirts designed. Of course, you need to be talking to your parents, getting your forms filled out, getting your deposits ready. Uh, because again, on May 6th, when we meet again for the first Wednesday, we are going to have our spaghetti dinner to raise money for False Creek. And we are going to be expecting those deposits in and your forms by that point. Um, and so please, please, please talk to your parents, get them signed, your forms, get them filled out. You can turn them in early if you would like. Uh, just send them to the church, um, you know, we've, our address, or you can uh, come up to the church and drop them off. Um, either way, it's up to you. Um, but we do need those forms in and we do need your deposits by the 6th. Um, other than that, I have some really good news. Um, as you guys know, Rosa's pushing along in the pregnancy. We found out yesterday that we're having another little boy. And so, I don't know if you saw, you may have already seen on Facebook, but uh, we are going to have another little boy. And I'm kind of like, ah, another Elijah. And so, <laughs> it's going to get kind of crazy in the house here in the next few months. And so, uh, we are really excited though. We're excited um, to include you guys in on that. And so, well, let's go ahead and get on to our lesson today. I'm going to ask you a question. I, well, first, I'm, I want to make a statement, and then I'll ask you a question. I hate when stories end. I cannot stand it when a story ends. For instance, a movie or a TV show or just a book series. It, it just kind of tears at me when something it has finality to it. it. It ends. I'm never going to see it again. I'm never going to get to experience new content from it. Um, an example I think of is like the Avengers series. Now you may say, wait, Brother Easton, they're still doing Avengers movies. They're still doing it. Yeah, but the the newest Avengers movie was kind of like the apex of that series. It was kind of the big end point for what we had experienced the past 10 years in all the films. And so it was kind of a heartfelt, emotional experience for me watching those movies because I invested time into them and seeing where the characters went, and it was kind of the end. It was the end of the story. And so it's kind of always bittersweet when you get to the end. Um, a TV show I watched when I was a kid, you guys probably know of this, Rose and I watched it quite a bit on Disney Channel, was like Good Luck Charlie. And of course, if you've never seen this show, it's a story about a, a young teenage girl that has a big family, and she makes these diaries over her, these video diaries over her little sister, Charlie, and teaching her different values, different things she's learned in life. And the way that show ended, it was a final kind of feeling to it. You knew it wasn't going to happen again. And so it was bittersweet. Even though it was a good ending, it was happy, it was joyful, it still had an end to it. And so stories, it always kind of stinks at the end when you know it's over. And so my question to you is, are you the same way? Is it? Does it kind of give you a bittersweet feeling when you see a story in one of your favorite movies or TV shows or books. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to get into today. There's a story, though. That's the, This is the good news. There's a story that never ends. There's a story that you think should have ended, but it didn't. And that's the story of the cross. That's the story of Jesus dying on the cross. Any other story would have ended it right there as a tragedy with Jesus dying on the cross and being buried. But we know as believers the good news is, is that Jesus didn't stay dead. 
Jesus resurrected. Jesus came back to life. Jesus is still alive. And because of that, the story doesn't end. It's just the beginning. It does not end. And so we don't have to be disappointed in that story. We can be excited that there's at least one story that won't end. There's one story that will continue on. And we get to experience sequels upon sequels of that story. And the resurrection is important for us. We need to realize that, that the resurrection... Um, is important for us. The, the, there's no finality. Death is not a finality for you and me. It is not the end of our story. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, it is not the end. It's only the beginning. What you experience in this life is but a, just a small little tip of the mighty iceberg that is eternal life. It's, it's unreaching. It's eternal life is never ending. And so when you think of the resurrection... Um, it's very important for us to understand why it was so necessary. Why is it necessary that Jesus resurrected? Why is it necessary that the story continued? Why is it necessary that the that the that Jesus actually did come back to life and didn't just stay dead? Why must the story continue? And so I'm going to talk to you today um, of the importance of Jesus's resurrection, the importance. Of the story continuing and not ending at his death. There's a, a reason for all of us that we need to understand that it was very vital that Jesus resurrected. Often when we think of Jesus and Easter, we think of his death on the cross. We think about the taking of our sins, which is very important, but we cannot miss the resurrection. The resurrection is the ultimate end of it all. It is, it is literally the climax of the story. It is where it gets good. Um, and so we need to understand that it is very important that we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, that he actually did die, but he also rose again three days later. As a believer, it is vital to our faith. It is vital to who we are that Jesus resurrected. And so I'm going to lay out for you um, some reasons why it was significant, why it was important that Jesus resurrect. And so for starters, if you want to open your Bibles for me uh, to 1 Corinthians okay, chapter 15, um, the Apostle Paul speaks to the church of Corinth here, and he gets into that he preached the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And that Jesus did appear before many people, and, and he was resurrected. People got to see him. People witnessed to it. And he gets into verse 12. We're going to start in verse 12 here. He says, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? You see, the people of Corinth, they, they believe that Jesus Christ died and he rose from the dead three days later. They didn't deny that, but they had a hard time grasping that they were going to resurrect, that, that people would have a bodily resurrection. And they, they had trouble accepting that. Um, and so Paul here says, how, how is it that you can believe that Jesus died and resurrected? How is it that we've preached Christ to you and, and that the big finale of Christ's work is his resurrection? And you don't believe that there is a resurrection. And so Paul actually gets into some negative things, the consequences of not believing in a resurrection here. And so let me read these verses real quick, starting in verse 13. It says, But if there's no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ, those who have died in Christ, have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, 
We are all, uh, we are all, of all men most to be pitied. The last part, he says, if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, if there's no resurrection, we have, are of all men most to be pitied. Okay, so there's a couple things. I want to change it into a positive here because Paul gives us the negative that if we don't believe in the resurrection, this is the consequence of if the resurrection didn't happen. But I want to take it in a positive route. The resurrection, first off, it is important because it proved Jesus as God's Son. It proved Jesus as God's Son. And so verse 13 says, if there's no resurrection in, of the dead, not even Christ had resurrected. So G, if there's no such thing as a resurrection of the dead, then Jesus couldn't have resurrected. And why is it important that Jesus resurrected? Well, because he claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed to be God in the flesh that came to earth to die for men. And a, a God does not stay dead. A God resurrects. A God has power to overcome death. And so Jesus had to die on the cross, but he also had to resurrect to prove he was who he said he was, the Son of God. Let me read real quick in Matthew chapter 20. And we're going to look at a couple pieces of scripture tonight. Um, as I read this for you, okay, um, to give you some proofs so that maybe you can sit on them for the rest that we can think about this. It says, as Jesus was about to go up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside by themselves, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and scourge and crucify him, and on the third day he would be raised up. And so Jesus prophesied that he would die when he entered Jerusalem. He was going to die by crucifixion, nonetheless. So he even, he even knew what type of death he would face. And he says, I'm going to die in this way, but I'm going to rise up three days later. That's a bold prediction to make. And so if he was just a man, Jesus would be a liar because he would stay dead. The only way Jesus could be telling the truth is if he was really the Son of God. Only God in the flesh could overcome death. Nobody we know of has actually just come back to life in their body, resurrected with a new body uh, spiritually. We've never seen that. When people die, they die, don't they? But Jesus was proclaiming that he was not going to stay dead, that three days later he would come back that he would be raised from the dead, okay? And so we see that Jesus proclaims that, and so it's either he dies and he's a liar, he doesn't rise from the dead, or he proves himself by resurrecting, and it, it proves his testimony uh, to his disciples. But let me see here, let me show you some more. In Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 13 we see, let me go to it real quick. In verses 32 through 35, okay? 32 through 35 says that, And we preached you the good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled this promise to our children, and that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm. This is quoted from Psalms 2, uh, verse 7. And it says here, You are my son, Today I have begotten you. Okay. As for the fact that he raised him up from the dead, no longer to return to decay, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your holy one to undergo decay. And that, those two were quotes from Isaiah 55.3 and Psalm 16.10. Okay. And so these were prophesied in the Old Testament concerning Jesus. And so Paul in Acts is telling the people that Jesus was going to resurrect. He was meant to resurrect, to fulfill prophecy. You see that? God raised him from the dead and calls him son, right? By resurrecting from the dead, he was proving that Jesus was his son. It vindicated Jesus. It proved he said he was right. Um, he was telling the truth when he said he was the Son of God. 
And so the resurrection has to happen in order for Jesus to be considered the Son of God. Okay? No dead man could con consider themselves God. You die and you're done. But if you're God in the flesh and you come back, that proves you have the power of God. You are the Son of God. And Jesus, when he died and he was raised from the dead, he came back as, I mean, representing the eternal king. He was the eternal king. Um, and, um, and he proved it, didn't he? And one more, Romans chapter 1. Very first chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 4. And this is Paul, when he first writes to the Romans, he's giving them an introduction. And he says, Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand, though his, uh, his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son. So God proclaimed through his prophets concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh, who was declared the son of God with power by the resurrection. Do you hear that? He was declared by God, the Son of God, His Son, with power through the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of the faith among all the Gentiles for His name's sake, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. And so Paul says here that God declared through the prophets that Jesus was his son. He declared the son of God. He declared him with power. And how, what did he use to declare Jesus? He declared him through or by the resurrection. The resurrection was God's declaration, this is my son. This is Jesus Christ. And so the resurrection had to happen in order for Jesus to be, to be you know, if he, he didn't resurrect, he wasn't the son of God. And so he had to resurrect as the Son of God, okay? And so it's one of those things you have to understand that no resurrection, no Son of God. He was just a man that died. But with the resurrection, God proved, this is my Son. He came in the flesh. He lived a life. He, 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 he did miracles. He taught my teachings. And then he died for your sins. And then he raised from the dead three days later. He is God in the flesh. Okay? And so it proved Jesus as the Son of God. And that's important for the other reasons. Because if Jesus isn't the resurrected king, if he's not the Son of God, then it kind of all these other purposes that Paul lays out kind of fall short, don't they? Um, the next one, it says it, uh, the importance of Jesus' resurrection is that it gives purpose to our preaching and faith. In verse 14 of 1 Corinthians, 15 where we started it says here and if Christ has not been raised then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also in vain guys the foundation of our faith as believers it stems on Jesus's resurrection what we believe rises or falls with Jesus's resurrection we believe that there is a God that loves us sent his son to die for us raised him from the dead as the resurrection and the life so that he could give us life, so that we could have resurrection as well. And so without Jesus resurrecting, we actually miss an integral part of the gospel, the gospel message, and it doesn't give purpose to our preaching. If we just preached a man died that taught good things, what, what use is that? But instead, if we preach that there is a God that came in human flesh and died for you and me, then we have purpose in our preaching. But more than that, we have purpose in our faith. We have the cornerstone of our faith is Jesus. We are able to wrestle with the problems of this world and overcome this world in him who already overcame it. If Jesus resurrected from the dead, he overcame sin and death. And because of that, when we turn to him, we also become overcomers in Jesus. But if Jesus never resurrected, we don't have that hope and promise. Our faith falls if the resurrection did not occur. And so it's important to understand how important this resurrection is because it gives purpose to our preaching and it really stimulates our faith, doesn't it? It gives purpose to our faith. 
Okay. Third, if Jesus uh, Jesus's resurrection also proved that Jesus's disciples were telling the truth. So not only was Jesus telling the truth, but his disciples were telling the truth. If you see in verse 15, Paul says, Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. So if there's no resurrection for anybody, if nobody comes back from the dead, then by the, by the disciples preaching Jesus Christ resurrected, they would have been lying. They would have been telling lies to the people. They would have been false witnesses or false teachers. Okay? And so they are saying, because of Jesus' resurrection, because it actually happened, we are telling the truth. We have seen with our own eyes. If you don't realize, Jesus appeared for like 40 days after his death, when he resurrected, to several disciples, not just the, 12, the 11 apostles that were left, Okay? He appeared to countless others. Actually, the Bible says that he appeared to over 500 at one time. That's actually uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 6, just a few verses earlier. It says, After that he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep or have died. And so he says, literally at one time, there were 500 of us who saw him resurrected. And so these men knew that Jesus came back to life. And I want you to understand, these men and, wi and women, there were some women that were involved in it as well, uh, disciples of his, okay? These men and women were willing to go to their deaths for this belief. Let me ask you, would you be willing to die for a lie? Would you be willing to die for something that never happened? I don't think we would. We're not the type of people that would be willing to go to that length for a lie. I don't think anybody would, hardly. And so these people must have been telling the truth because they were willing to face horrific deaths. You know, Peter, one of Paul's, uh, uh, one of Jesus' closest disciples, um, he was crucified upside down. You know, Paul, the one who writes this, he was beheaded in Rome. There was some that were thrown off of Tops of like cathedrals. There were some that were plunged with spears. There were some killed by the sword. I think it was Thomas killed, or Thomas or James that was killed by the sword. These people were willing to die. The, the writer of Revelations, John, he had oil poured over, like tar poured over him, and then he was exiled to Patmos. He was persecuted for God. And he was one of he was like the only one that survived. Guys, these people were willing to to go to those links for a lie? No, it had to be true. And so if Jesus' resurrection never really happened, they literally went to the extreme just for a lie. Some of us, we're willing to lie to get out of trouble. We're willing to tell whatever lie it is. But I don't think any of us are willing to go to our deaths for a lie. But for something that we believe in our heart, that we have seen with our own eyes, we're definitely willing to die for that. And so these guys are proved truthful if Jesus actually resurrected, and that he did. So these disciples were telling the truth. Let's go to the next one. He says that it also, the resurrection, it ensures the forgiveness of our sin. Okay, going to the next uh, part, uh, verse 16, For if the dead are not raised... Not even Christ has been raised. So if there's no resurrection, Jesus wasn't raised. And if Jesus, Christ, had not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still trapped in your sins. So if Jesus didn't resurrect from the dead, proving he was the Son of God, you are still stuck in your sins and you will die in your sins. You will perish in your sins. Our faith is literally made worthless if Jesus didn't resurrect. We are stuck in our sins without Jesus Christ and his resurrection. I want you to understand that. We know the process. Jesus went to the cross. And when he died on the cross, he, his flesh was stricken on our behalf, right? He took the physical pain for us that we should have experienced. But he also took the sin, the spiritual aspect of it. He had the weight of our sin placed upon him. The Bible says that he actually became sin on our behalf. 
He took on the blackness of our sin, and that is the reason why the Father turned his back on him for a moment on the cross. And that's why Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's because God the Father cannot look upon that sin. And so we know that God in the flesh, Jesus, carried that sin for us on the cross. And he died with that sin on the cross and was buried with it, meaning that it was defeated with him. But it couldn't end there. He had to actually resurrect to prove that there was hope in that, that, that he had literally conquered that sin on our behalf. He had overcome it, and it's no more, that he has erased it if we come to him in saving faith. So if we come to Jesus, we have our sins cleansed because he defeated them. He conquered them on the cross, and he resurrected, defeating them permanently, defeating death. And so if we don't believe in the resurrection, we can't have forgiveness for our sins. Because Jesus isn't the Son of God, and, and he doesn't, didn't resurrect. And he can't cleanse us of it. And so the resurrection is vital because it ensures that we have received forgiveness from him. That we do have hope. Our faith, again, rests on that. It's a cornerstone of our faith. Without Jesus' resurrection... There isn't hope of forgiveness of sins, okay? Moving to the next thing. It also gives complete and utter hope to believers in verse 18 through 19. It says, Then those also who have fallen asleep, those who've died in Christ, well, they would have perished if Jesus didn't resurrect. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are, all, uh, we are of all men most to be pitied. And so, literally, Jesus' resurrection is our hope. It is my hope as a believer that one day, if God chooses to take me from this world, or if he decides if Jesus comes back, it's time for Jesus to come back, and I go to be with him in heaven, one day I will get to experience that. I have the hope in that, that Jesus is alive, and because of that, I will not face an eternal death. That when I die, it's not just the end. It's not just black. It's not just gone. I'm out of existence. I am forever with God. I have that hope because of Jesus' resurrection. But if Jesus didn't resurrect, it says here that those who fall asleep, so when I die, when I die, I perish. I literally perish because there's no hope. I, Jesus didn't resurrect, so what makes me think I'm going to get to resurrect? that I'm going to get to have a spiritual life in heaven, a life with God, okay? And so Jesus had to resurrect in order for us to have hope. We have hope in a future life spent with God, a future life of no sorrow, no pain, because Jesus resurrected and conquered not only sin, but death on the cross, and so that's what we rely on. We place our faith in that. And it says here that if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, <clears throat> so if we just believe in him and there's no afterlife, we are of all men most to be pitied. Because there, it would be like taking all your time investing into something and it didn't really mean anything in the end. You know, you put all your, your effort, your money, your time, your energy into following a Jesus who never resurrected, then you really lived a pointless life, didn't you? If Jesus never resurrected, you wasted your time. But the good news is Jesus did resurrect. The story didn't end. Jesus resurrected from the dead, and because of that, we have purpose. We have fulfillment. We can guarantee. We have the most fulfilling lives. We are the least to be pitied. Because we have Jesus. Does that make us better than anybody? No. We're not better than anybody else. We have received the grace of Jesus Christ. But we at least know that this life is not in vain. That our effort in serving the Lord is not in vain. Everything we do, all the sacrifices that we make in this life for Jesus is worthwhile. That after this life, there is eternity in heaven. And Jesus even says, I go before you to make a place for you. I make a place for you, and I will come back and bring you to me. And there is going to be uh, mansions in heaven. And there's going to be gold and gold-lidden streets, and it's going to be glorious. 
and there's going to be treasures in heaven. We receive crowns in heaven that we can lay at Jesus' feet. We receive glory in heaven, guys, and it's all because of the resurrection, guys. And that leaves me with this final thing. Ultimately, there is no gospel without Jesus' resurrection. Ultimately, the story ends as a tragedy without Jesus' resurrection. The resurrection is essential for our faith, guys. The story has to continue. Or we have no hope. We have no faith. We have nothing in this life. That's why I feel pity for those that cling to other gods and that they cling to themselves in this life. Because they're putting their effort, they're putting their time, their energy into something that will only lead to death. It will only lead to destruction. They will never have purpose. Only through Jesus' resurrection can we have hope and purpose. Only through Jesus' resurrection can the gospel be fulfilled. And can we live, you know, excited and, and, and faithful. Guys, Jesus had to resurrect. It was essential to the gospel. It was essential to the story. Because I want you to understand, too, this whole point of 1 Corinthians 15 was to encourage us that there's a resurrection for us as well. So because Jesus resurrected, you also will receive a resurrection. When we die, if Jesus doesn't come back first, we go to be with Jesus spiritually. But there will be a time when Jesus returns that he says a trumpet will be blown and the dead will rise first. Those who've died will have rise first and they will receive new spiritual bodies, new resurrected bodies. Not the same bodies we experience right now that have pain and fatigue and tiredness and illnesses. We will receive new spiritual bodies. We will be perfect and made new in Christ. Guys, we have hope of that. So I encourage you to trust in the resurrection. Let the resurrection of Jesus be the driving force for your faith. Continue this week remembering not only just Jesus' death, but remembering that he's alive. That tomb is empty. The stone was rolled away. Our Lord and Savior came out of it. And he's still alive today. And one day he will return. So my prayer for you guys is that you will trust in the resurrection today. And you will believe in it and you will you will preach it to your friends and your family and you will study it and you will you will dwell on it and you will think about it and you will let it drive your life because the resurrection is vital to our faith let me pray for us god i thank you for this time i thank you for these kids thank you for anybody that's watching this video right now lord i lift them up to you right now god i pray that they would understand that the story didn't end on the cross, Lord. It was only the beginning. When you rose from the dead, Lord, you paved the way for an eternal story, a beautiful story, Lord, and that we get to be a part of that, Lord, if we put our faith and trust in you, Jesus. I just pray that if there's anybody listening to this message, Lord, today, that they would put their, their faith in you, Lord, and that they would trust in you, Lord Jesus. You say in Romans, Lord, that if... Anybody will confess you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior, and what else? Believe you were raised from the dead. They will be saved. As the Lord, I pray if there's anybody right now, including my youth, Lord, that needs you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they would confess you, Lord Jesus, and that they would believe that you resurrected and that they place their hope in that, that one day they will be resurrected too in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your gift. Thank you for sacrificing your life for us. But also, Lord, thank you for Easter. Thank you for that Sunday morning when you came out of that cave, out of that tomb, to be the King of kings and Lord of lords, to be the everlasting life, Lord, to be the one that gives us eternal life. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this time. Go with us this week. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, hope to see you next week. Love you guys. Have a good one. Bye.